Hello everybody, I'm uh, Warner Chavez, SQL Server Certified Master with SQLTurbo.com and today we're gonna go over my demo number two for in-memory OLTP use cases and this demo is called the landing pad. You might have also heard this being called as the shock absorber which is one of the common design patterns of uh, taking advantage of in-memory OLTP and basically what this pattern is is just uh, taking large amounts of data and using in-memory tables as uh, staging or landing tables you can then transform process or whatever you want to do as part of your ETL processes and then put it either on a permanent in-memory table or on a permanent classic disk based table so uh, we're gonna do a quick comparison classic versus in-memory and uh, check out the results so let's go straight into the demo I have a Windows uh, Server 2012 server here and I already have a SSIS package set up and as you guys can see it's just uh, basically two data flows one is classic and the other one is uh, in memory and what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna kick off this task right here and while that is completing I am going to talk about the setup of this demo so let's go over here I have this uh, VentureWorks 2008 R2 database that I basically uh, customized to have an in-memory file group and some in-memory tables and I have these uh, tables called transaction history landing and transaction history landing in memory as you guys can see it's a very common schema transaction ID identity 11 a product ID an order ID a line ID transaction data transaction type quantity cost modified date uh, primary key clustered on the ID very common setup as well and on the in-memory one I have the exact same schema the only difference is that being an in-memory table I'm using a primary key that is non clustered and hashed on the transaction ID in this case I added a bucket count of 4 million records and we're actually using full in-memory durability so that means we're doing both schema and data before starting uh, the recording, I ran this truncate table and this delete so that both tables were completely empty uh, when we're running the SSIS package. Uh, we can check on progress here. As we can see, it's read about almost 2 million rows at this point, and it's using the balanced data distributor to take the input from the flat file and redirect it into four threads and on those four threads is going into an OLEDB destination they're all pointing to the same database um, if I'll show you guys what the file looks like that we're loading I can open it real quick here on WordPad so the file is about 200 megabytes and it contains two point something almost three million uh, records of data as you guys can see here this is basically a CSV file very common to what you might see as a mass export from you know a, a system or from a let's say transaction history from a vendor or from a third party and they just send you like every day a 200 megabyte file uh, if you guys can see here it's right here yeah so 191 megs and you would just load it into your database so let's go back here and it's still going at this point oh, there we go it's completed so if we check out uh, the progress and we just scroll down to the bottom we can see our elapsed time was 2 minutes and 38 seconds uh, and we processed uh, 3 million and 213 and 108 uh, rows right and like I said uh, we read the flat file it goes through the balanced data distributor so we can split it into four tasks and then each one of this of uh, these uh, just spawns a thread and the thread runs the inserts into the database okay so that is the classic version that is inserted into the classic table now uh, we have the other task here our data flow task in memory so that's what I'm gonna run next so let me just execute this task now and we can see the progress here and as 1 million already loaded there's uh, 2 million already loaded 
and now there's three million loaded and the whole thing's done and if we check out the progress here we can see it took 16 seconds so we're talking about uh, two minutes and uh, 38 um, two minutes and 38 seconds on a classic versus only 16 seconds on uh, the in memory so if we take that amount let's say two minutes and 38 seconds that's uh, 150 eight seconds and we divide it you know by 16 so we have an almost tenfold improvement in speed of how fast this file was loaded just because we're using in memory and um, the reason for this uh, well uh, there's there's several of them first of all there's no locking or latching in the in memory version so you know the four threads that we have as part of our data flow they don't conflict with each other as part of of the load whereas in the classic version these are all doing a, a last page insert on a clustered index in the in-memory version if you guys remember we're using a hash clust non-clustered index for the primary key so that means that the four of them can easily and locklessly um, insert into the hash table without you know conflicting with each other whereas in the classic version that we're dealing with a primary key clustered and we're doing uh, identity 1-1 one, one, uh, there's several things going on first of all they all have to acquire locks to write they all have to acquire the latch to write on the last page of the index and at the same time while the index is growing the allocations that are being done for this uh, clustered index have to be requested by the engine and also transaction logged every time uh, that one new page gets allocated as we're loading the 200 megabytes of data whereas in memory the allocations in memory are very very fast um, and the data itself is just being streamed in the background um, to the data and the delta files so as we can see in this case uh, the landing pad is just a great pattern where we have very easy to get great uh, uh, gains from just using the in-memory tables. So let's just jump back into a presentation uh, to do our recap. So the use case recap for the landing pad. It's a very easy way to dip your toes on the in-memory pool. Uh, if you have any type of staging or landing tables right now on your ETL where you're loading a lot, a lot of data into it but it doesn't stay there you're gonna do some processing and then put it somewhere else then this is a great thing you just have to enable it with memory optimized and you can get great benefits just like I show in the demo uh, also bear in mind on my in-memory table that I was using in the demo I was actually using um, schema and data if I would have been using a delayed durable database or uh, doing the whole thing with a delayed durability transaction or even no durability at all with just a schema only table the gains would have been even higher because I would not have needed to write uh, to the transaction log at all or I would have not written um, to the data and the delta files as well so I could have removed even more IO just by using delayed durability or no durability I didn't do it for the demo just to show that even with a fully durable uh, table it's just you know you get a great gain in performance um, and the other thing uh, and one of the you know big takeaways to take from here is make sure you maximize CPU power every time you do something within memory you want to be using multiple cores at the same time that's the reason why I added the balanced data distributor there in the data flow task so that it would take the input from the file and start distributing on the four threads so that each thread would stay busy inserting data and you know taking use um, and maximizing the capability of all your CPU cores. So, uh, thanks for watching for uh, our demo number two for in-memory LTP use cases, the landing pad. Uh, there's one more demo that I will be putting online in the next couple of days, and that is about uh, the table variable conversion. So, stay tuned. Thank you.